Today, we're going to talk about regaining sensitivity to sexual sin. This is an important topic that I think is going to be relevant for your life, and it's been relevant for my life. I want to begin with a story here. I was probably like 16 years old, and I was just getting in the habit of watching whatever was interesting to me on TV. No big deal, right? I think on one particular Sunday evening, there was some sort of award show. I can't remember what it was. Maybe the Grammys or the... And probably, I think it was the Grammys because it was a musical artist. So I was watching these different performances and not thinking too much of it, honestly. I was really getting into pop culture and interested in seeing the different performances. And I remember my dad coming down from his bedroom upstairs because it was late at night. And he, he watched the TV with me for a little bit and he said... Hey, Isaac, you know, I know you're enjoying watching this, but like, does the fact that they're not wearing much clothes like concern you at all? Like, does that, you know, does that make you feel any particular way? And I said, no, 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 you know, Dad, I'm, I'm fine. Like, I can handle it. It really doesn't affect me. I'm just interested in the music. And honestly, if you would ask me, like, seriously and look in my heart, I really tried to convince myself that that was true. I'm in it for the art. I'm in it for the story. And this is something that you commonly hear, especially when people talk about movies or art in general, that they say, you know what, I'm just in it for the story. I don't care that the movie has a lot of nudity. It's just a compelling story. And even blockbusters these days, like Oppenheimer and things like that, like significant you know, parts of nudity yeah and if you can fast forward it at home okay i understand that but it's like going to the movie theater and tons of people are like christians are saying hey you know what it doesn't affect me not a big deal i'm here for the story i'm here for the art maybe this is you too and i and i kind of want to burst your bubble today i kind of do okay so let's go to the scriptures as we do okay this is proverbs 7 and this is the warning against the adulteress okay so you know things are getting serious we are in verse six and it says, for at the window of my house, I have looked out through the lattice and I've seen among the simple, I have perceived among the youths, a young man lacking sense. That might be me and you. We'll see. Passing along the streets near her, her cor corner, taking the road to her house. Okay. This seems like a benign thing, but in scripture, nothing is benign. Everything is important and, and importantly placed. So we often do this. We often do this. We say, it's just a road. It's just a road. I'm just going home. I'm just taking the road. But in the back of our minds, we know, well, this is her corner. This is her corner. Whose corner? The adulteress. The seductress. We know that we're walking by, we're walking through that we might be tempted. We might be tempted. So why are we taking the road? Why are we taking the road? Because we lack sense. Because we lack sense. It reminds me of a video I saw the other day. I love watching cooking and food videos on YouTube and Instagram or whatever. And one of the videos I saw was um, filleting the world's most dangerous fish. This is really interesting to me, okay? And it's this fish that is super dangerous if you puncture certain parts of it because it's got this venom, this poison, I mean, right? And that it's going to seep through. And I think it's a, a, in ja Japan that they, they utilize this fish. And it's really expensive and it's really dangerous. And you want to make sure that you, the person that's filleting it really knows how to do it because otherwise you're going to puncture this and the poison's going to go everywhere. In a lot of ways, I think we see ourselves as that sushi master, that person that can take that super poisonous fish and fillet it in such a way where we get the delicious fillet without any of the poison. I hate to break it to you, but I do believe that most of us, if not all of us, are the rookie that gets into the kitchen for the first time with, you know, a butter knife and we're trying to fillet a, a poisonous, one of the most poisonous fish in the world and we're puncturing it all over. And we think that we're just getting this beautiful, tasty fillet of fish. Meanwhile, we've punctured so much of the poison sac that it's all seeping through the meat. We don't even taste it. Meanwhile, our insides are being poisoned. That's what this video is about. It's about the fact that we need to be retrained. We, our minds need to be rewired because we've been accepting junk and poison for so long, believing that we can handle it, believing that it doesn't affect us. Meanwhile, it's poisoning our soul and the way that we look at other people, the way we look at the world and the way we look at God. Think about it this way. Um, I, this might be a little bit culturally insensitive to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Hopefully I don't get canceled. But when I think of a Mexican grandma, one of the things that really, uh, I don't know, one of the key factors of a Mexican grandma is that their hands are not sensitive to heat, okay? This might be a strange thing if you've never spent time with a Mexican grandma, but, but their hands are not sensitive to heat. They can just flip things 
on the pan. They can touch the pan. They can touch the heat. They can stick their hand in the fire and like it, literally impervious to heat. It's not that the heat isn't there. It's that they have been desensitized to it because their heat, their hand has been within the heat for so long. All those nerves and those things that have used to be sensitive to heat and send you signals up. Okay, so there's a problem. There's heat here. That's danger, whatever. All those things have been fried off literally, right? So here's the deal. For us, so many of those sensitive nerves, okay, in our heart, in our conscience have been seared off. Our consciences have been seared. So why? So what happens then? It just means that they're not as sensitive to things that are actually going to be harmful for us. Here's another example. Many people try to get off sugar. They say, you know, there is sugar in everything and it's actually harmful for us. High fructose, corn syrup, whatever, you know, some people for it's seed oils. Okay, whatever. Let's use sugar in this case. And, and, but, but it's in everything. So we're constantly consuming sugar and it's just, it's just in everything, right? And we get a taste for it and it's probably harming us. It probably is too much uh, overconsumption. And when we try fruits, like, I don't know about you, but if you've had like a Krispy Kreme donut or, or city just got a Krispy Kreme and I had a Krispy Kreme donut for the first time. And it's like those things, some of them are very, very sweet, right? You have something like that. And then you go to a piece of fruit. The piece of fruit is just like, okay, it's fine. You know, especially like an apple. Okay. It's, it's fine. It's sweet, but it's not like a Krispy Kreme donut. Meanwhile, if you've, if you haven't had a Krispy Do Kreme donut before, or it's been, you know, a decade, right. Or any, any sugar really outside processed sugar, the fruit is going to taste so delicious. It's going to taste so real, so vibrant. That's what's happened with our sexuality is that for so long, we've just been spoon fed processed sugar in everything. So this kind of just this, the sexuality and everything it's laced with it or in our over sexualized culture is just laced with it. We're constantly consuming, consuming, consuming. Meanwhile, when we hit the real thing, what the, what our sexuality was designed for, when we think about that, it just seems kind of passe one man, one woman in the context of marriage, like loving each other, being with each other physically, enjoying each other. Like, it's just like, but, but what about all this other stuff? What about all the processed sugar? You've been desensitized because you've just been eating all this crap for so long. Me too, right? So what do we need to do? We need to do a sugar fast. We need to get off that fake stuff and start eating the real stuff, the fruit, where it actually tastes good because it's natural and it's good. If we continue this analogy, we need to train our appetite, right? We don't crave thing that we, we, we wouldn't crave a piece of fruit if we'd just been eating cake all day. That's not what we're going to be craving. But if you eat natural foods, then you're going to crave the natural sweetness of, of a piece of fruit. What you consume is training your appetite to what you want more of. It's true, right? So if you want more of the fake, that's what your, your body's going to crave. Okay, some of you might think this is going too far, but here's the deal. If you think it is okay on social media to watch a girl in a bikini or a video with a girl in a bikini, and you're just like, you know, it doesn't affect me, whatever. It's just what people wear, no big deal. Um, this is for guys or for girls, like for girls, it's like, hey, you know, a guy, you think, I'm just watching guys shirtless, working out, like you're following him, you're, you know, is this an okay thing for you? Do you think this is okay? Some people will say, hey, it's no big deal, right? It's no big deal, it's just what people wear, okay? Normal does not mean moral, normal does not mean good, okay? That's an important distinction. And I really want you to be honest with yourself. I really want you to be honest with yourself. Is this good for your soul? Is this good for your soul? Even subconsciously, is this good for your soul? Do you want to get in the habit of watching this stuff? Some people will basically criticize or even make fun of people that are overly cautious and discerning, calling them, you know, prudish or, you know, just religious or any of these things, right? Here's the thing. We are not... But meanwhile, we're not overly, we're not going to, you know, demean somebody that's overly cautious and discerning about what they put in their body in terms of the food they eat, right? People that are not wanting to eat, you know, junk food, they're like, unless they're really snooty about it, they're seen as like, wow, I want to do that too. Wow, that's really commendable. Wow, that's awesome that you have that, that discipline, right? We see them as, as somebody that we aspire to because they're cautious and they're discerning about what they put in their body because they value their body. Meanwhile, we're like, yeah, you know, I wish that I had that self-control, but I just ate like seven donuts yesterday. But with our soul, we, we make fun of people that are cautious and discerning. Why? Well, because we feel guilty because we don't want to do that. This is not about erasing the fact that you were a sexual being. 
that that's not what it's about. It's about taking out all these things that are distorting and twisting it, that are coming into your view that you are consuming on a daily basis, that's shaping the way that you think about sexuality and putting a stop to it and putting a major filter on those things about retraining and resensitizing yourself to, wait, uh, maybe I don't need to see basically a naked woman's body every day. Maybe that's not a good thing for me on social media. Maybe I need to cut that out. And to see in a lot of ways, especially on social media, that you're being played, that people are using sex and in any content and any media to sell things. It's true. Stop becoming a product. Stop being a product. Start waking up to the reality that these things are training you to think in a particular way, training you to go down certain paths of thought. That where do they lead you? To lust. To lust. The only way to resensitize yourself to these things is, is two things, okay? God's healing that is supernatural. God, I need your help. God, I've seen things that I don't want to see. God, I have images pop in my brain that I never want to see again. I'm sorry. Can you help heal my brain? Can you be with me? Can you resensitize me to what is good and healthy sexuality and what is actually harmful for me? So then I, so just like my hand on the, on the, on the heat of the oven, uh, just so just like my, my hand, so just like my hand in the fire, I'll pull it away and, and get it away because it's going to be harmful for me. And the second thing is to change your diet, change what you consume. What are the things that you've allowed in your view, allowed as acceptable because you say, I can handle it. I'm good. You make excuses, right? Meanwhile, just like me uh, at, at that, watching that award show with those scantily clad women, I need to be like, look in the mirror and say, Isaac, who are you fooling yourself? You can't handle this. This isn't good for your soul. This isn't good. Turn it off. And that's what I needed to do then. And that's what I'm trying to do now. And that's what I encourage you to. It's not about just trying to be a good person, trying to be a good Christian. It's about wanting to honor God because we love God, because we want to honor him, because he saved us, because he's shown us so much grace that we want to honor him with our life and our minds and our bodies. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a lot from it. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. If you want to support what I'm doing, join on Patreon in the link in my description. And until next time, God bless.